Well, welcome back. You're watching KBC Prime, and uh, we are now joined by our sister, Teresia Mbogwa. Thank you very much, sister, for welcome. finding time to come and discuss this topic with us. And I want to start by asking you, because I know that your mission was uh, uh, set up in 1975, and the initial uh, goal was evangelism. Uh, start us off by telling us what forces influenced your decision to transition from what you were set up for, which was evangelism, and to move into the area of education, especially in the marginal areas in Kenya. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we, as Evangelistic Sisters of Mary, when our founders settled in Nongatarongai, they saw how the area looks like. Because we have slums, that is Kware Slum, then we have Kataka, and we as Evangelizing Sisters of Mary, we felt we should promote these children to education. And our first sisters who started, who settled in Ongatarongai, they started uh, a primary, a nursery school, which by then was called Fatima Nursery School. Mm -hmm. And after starting the nursery, they, they, they continued seeing the demand mm -hmm. that we cannot only give education in a nursery school. Mm -hmm. So we started the secondary school, which is called Bishop Mazodi Secondary School. Mm -hmm. The Bishop Mazodi is the founder, the name Bishop Mazodi was a Kobani missionary mm -hmm. who started our congregation. Mm -hmm. Then we said, let us name our school Bishop Mazodi. Mm -hmm. After naming the school Bishop Mazodi, we started uh, form one with some girls. Yeah. Then the school grew. Mm -hmm. Then after some times we felt there is a gap between the nursery school and the secondary school. So we started a, a primary school before the CBC started. Mm -hmm. And this nursery school has come up nicely and now it is a primary school. We have reached grade four mm -hmm. and we are happy that Having the grade before we are seeing the transition of mm -hmm. CBC. Mm -hmm. So then, because we have the facilities, that is all the, what is needed okay. in a school. Uh, so we feel we don't have any, any gap. There is no gap. There is no gap. Let me ask you, eh? because you, 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 you've brought in the, the components of CBC. Mm -hmm. You know, we have children who are still learning under trees. Yes in those far flung areas. In fact, some even attend, uh, you know, classrooms that are infested with jiggers. Yes. Now I'm asking you this because you're a teacher mm. and this is a system that is supposed to benefit children right across. Yes. So we are having institutions that have the infrastructure ready like kiosks up and running. But then the flip side is we have other schools that are not prepared okay so my question to you is do you think with a system like cbc there are some children in this country who are disadvantaged very much because uh, you find that there, there is no infrastructure others the the, the, the cbc has some demands yeah. whereby the parents look to 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 be going more than they are supposed to mm -hmm. And if they are not able to provide, this child may not learn. Mm -hmm. Therefore, these children who are disadvantaged, I, I, I feel to appeal to the government mm -hmm. that some of these things they are putting in the CBC, mm -hmm. if they can be reduced a bit. Because imagine when the, a teacher tells the children, go and go tomorrow come with the, maybe chicken or eggs, mm -hmm. this parent may not provide. Mm -hmm. They don't have. Like in our place there, mm -hmm. especially the Kwara Islam, you find the parent does, don't have. Mm -hmm. So where will she get from? So the, 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 the parents are, are suffering. Yeah. So if this is CBC, mm -hmm. the, the, the government can modify it, that yeah. is by request, yeah. to, to avoid so many things which parents are not able to provide. Mm -hmm. Like now, also the many things with their digital electronics mm. and you find some of these they are not there yeah so you find these schools which are now disadvantaged mm -hmm. 
I have worked in places, I believe up to today, there is no electricity. Yeah. So if you tell the children to use to log in. The, 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 the computer, the, yeah. they don't have. Yeah. And to, to, to have mm, data, mm -hmm. they, they cannot get. You cannot get it. Let me ask you, uh, because you talk about parents' inability mm. to fund, you know, the system. Of course, although in the back of our minds, we know that the president has already asked yes. a task force to look into, um, you know, whether we should retain or we should have a hybrid or whatever it is. The mm. task force will guide us. But when you're talking about the parents, my mind also went back to some teachers who have even improvised. A parent is asked to buy, a, I don't know what you call that, is it plaster, plaster serine or something? Plaster serine. Yeah, plaster serine. Mm. But he cannot afford. So what the teacher does is he innovates. They, they innovate. Yeah, and they say, listen, let's use mud. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to ask you this question, because this is a pet question that I always have, <laughs> and I always ask education. Uh, you know that we have seen even the good book, like the Bible, mm. you know, being translated into local dialects. Yes. Okay? Do you think that a time has come when we should also translate sciences into local languages so that we improve the level of comprehension. I ask this because I'm aware there are countries that teach science in mother tongue. In most of those countries, when you look at their levels of development, mm. who could you? I, I believe it can work because the the sciences you know we the the, the local people let the people say like that they start la, uh, talking and yeah. in their mother tongue yeah and now because we have brought uh, attendance whereby the the children mm -hmm. we, we change them drastically yeah. mm -hmm. that come from your mother tongue to english or kiswahili mm -hmm. which sometimes it doesn't work mm -hmm. but if it can have that implementation of some of these subjects mm -hmm. taught in the, the mother tongue. Mm -hmm. I believe the children will have touchable, mm -hmm. touchable things to do and to see. Specifically the STEM subjects, science, technology, math. Some, some may not come in because <laughs> like technology, they, they, they may not manage to, to bring everything in their mother tongue. Because some of these things, they are named and labeled in English, in English. or Kiswahili, let right. me say. But itself. some you find they have some local languages which you cannot manage to change. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. And um, you've worked in uh, areas where culture is very strong. Yes. To the locals, huh? Yes. So as you push your agenda of educating both the boy and the child, girl child, I believe, mm -hmm. how, what, 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 do you run into problems when you're dealing with uh, those areas where, for example, they believe that women should be married off early yeah. and not taken to school to waste their time? All right? Where yes. we, are, we are still seeing um uh, cultural practices like female genital mutilation and so on and so forth and they hold those cultures very close and very dear to them how do you navigate that in fact the calendar where our school bishop Mazodi secondary school is in ogatarongai it is a maasai land whereby uh, the, the the local maasais mm -hmm. they have those strong cultures yeah. that maybe girls are not supposed to, to go to school. They, 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 they want them to be married early enough. Mm -hmm. And what I would say, there are, there are people who are working to rescue them. Mm -hmm. They rescue them yeah. from those harassment, let me call them like that. Mm -hmm. Then they bring them to us. Mm -hmm. And most of those who come to us, mm -hmm. we have to keep them in the school, and we talk to those who have brought them that they protect them when they're at home mm -hmm. and as we protect them when they're in school. Mm -hmm. So we only talk to the, the guardians. We call it the, those who are bringing them. Yeah. But a, a parent who may come and say, I have my daughter here, mostly we don't allow them. Because you may give the daughter, mm -hmm. then you find it's taking 
her to a husband. Mm -hmm. So we only we protect them, and these people who bring them to us, mm -hmm. they try to talk to those parents who feel a girl should not get education. Mm -hmm. And when they come to us, for sure we don't segregate. Mm -hmm. You may not know who has come to us through this, through the, that, but they mix properly with the others. Mm -hmm. And we have always received girls mm -hmm. who have undergone such cases. Or maybe a girl was taken for marriage, mm -hmm. then she discovered, ah, I should uh, get education. Mm -hmm. So they look for people mm -hmm. who will help them. Yeah. Like in my school, I have many who are brought by uh, a certain priest mm -hmm. who is in the congregation of the apostles of Jesus. Yeah. So he brings them to us and he tries to talk to the parents then we give them education yeah. and in the fact these girls are very clever bright they're very bright you know yeah. what you, what you're seeing as harassment mm -hmm. uh, they see it differently this is something that they have practiced over centuries it is true so it is part of their story mm -hmm. and uh, i ask that because initially when you are coming with a new idea this, you know, you're likely to run into problems, it is. you know, resistance and people don't want it and so on and so forth. So when you look back, mm -hmm. what, what can you say has been the impact? And are you starting to see the locals appreciating, you know, the role that your school, for example, is playing to them? They do. Uh, the, I want to give a concrete example. Yeah. We have, we had a girl who, who came out from the family mm -hmm. and came to our school and this girl brought herself. Mm -hmm. Then we were able to interrogate and we said, because she needed education, let us educate her. Mm -hmm. Then the mother was still wanted her to get married. Yeah. She came back to me mm -hmm. and told me, sister, I don't want to go where my mother won't. Yeah. So we, we had to help her mm. to go to a certain home. Yeah. Then after staying in that home, mm -hmm. we struggled and we got somebody who could assist her. Because in our school, we don't have donors. Mm -hmm. we, we, we rely on what the parents contribute. Yeah. But we got somebody. In fact, now we are talking, she's in a certain college. Mm -hmm. And we feel good because this girl, I think she's pursuing what she desired. Yeah. And she's happy. Yeah. Up to today, she still communicates. She communicates. And she always thanks us that we have helped her to reach where she wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And you transformed her life. And she's happy. Yeah. yeah. I realize you're talking a lot more about girls. How yes. about the boy child? The boy child is also there in our schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they are a bit, a bit dormant, let me use that word. Because when they are in, our, in the school, you know, they, they, are, they are the scholars. Mm -hmm. they, our boys are the scholars in okay. Bishop Masodi Secondary School. Yeah. And mostly when they leave, mm. they mostly don't come back. But, Why? But uh, we, we, when we try to follow them, you know, being, being there, it is a bit hard. That when they are leaving the, the school, mm -hmm. they, they, they are trying to focus on what to do next. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is small, small job around Kware Islam or Orongai. Mm. And uh, very few who have, who, the ones I have known, who mm. have continued with their education. Mm. Uh, they, they, you know, they want a white quarter job and mm. quick job. But with the girls I have seen, they, they mostly persevere and persist. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are trying our best. Mm -hmm. Also, we are trying to follow these boys. And uh, I would say, with the boys, very few who value education, as per now. Because they, they want to move to, to quick, to quick money, ah. to quick money. Oh. <laughs> yes. OK. Mm. It, it's, it's probably around the, the culture of uh, instant results. You know, I we, believe so. We are living in, in, in times when even the coffee is instant. Even the, 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 the emphasis is almost at the click of a button and so on and so forth. But let me ask you this. Eh? Mm. Because if you look at, uh, again, I just want to go back a little bit to CBC. If you look at um, the way it has been designed mm. and set up, mm. 
there is a role that parents play. Yes. All right? Mm. Yeah? Mm. The homework. Parents are, the system expects that parents will sit down with the children and help them mm. to, you know, to, 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 to undertake some assignments yes. that have been given to the kids. Mm. But what about, because you're a teacher, mm. what is the feedback you're getting from those parents who are illiterate, for example? They, they get the people to help them. To, do the, to help the children to do their homework. So the child has to look for somebody? The, no, the, the parent. Yeah. Because if the, the, this child go home with the assignment, yeah. and the teacher insists you have to come with this assignment done. Tomorrow. So yeah. the, the parents have to get somebody to help them to do the assignment. Wow. Because if they come, for sure, as they, they, you see the teachers are feared. Yeah. They don't know what will be the reaction. So it ha it, the, 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 you see also the parents are the ones who are doing the assignment for the children. So these children have, n they don't have a lot of time to think about what they are doing. Because mm -hmm. they are waiting for their parents to help them. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the CBC, it, it is good. But it has a lot of involvement of the parents. Yeah. And some of these parents are not able to reach there. Yeah. So that is why some of these things which I said there at the beginning, yeah. it is good to be re looked at mm -hmm. to, to avoid a lot of parents doing a lot of things. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they, they say, I, I don't know where I heard this, that when you educate a boy, you empower an individual. When you educate a girl, you, 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 you empower the entire nation nation okay yes. there are those the arguments for and against but mm -hmm. what does it really mean to empower a girl child in those marginalized areas the the girl child looked to be to, to, to be focused and to look ahead and that is why when this girl gets education you find others the, the others who decide to follow them but we, you know, let, let me say this, mm. our, ma many of our children, yeah. especially boys, mm. are, are really spoiled mm -hmm. by taking drugs. <laughs> so nobody wanted to desire to follow them. But with the girls, you find they are the ones helping their young ones, their parents, they are thinking seriously on what to do next to make a home stand. In fact, these days you find many girls are working hard. You find a girl can come out of the school, go, has something to do, at least to earn something, so that is able to help a parent, especially when the parents become sick. Okay. They, they, uh, they have to, to, uh, to struggle much yeah. to help their, their parents. Yeah. But with the boys, some of them, I'm not talking of all of them, yeah. but I'm talking of some of them, yeah. you find they, they, they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. Okay. So that is why educating a girl, yeah. it, it helps a lot. What Although I would say, not yeah. educating all of them. You know, yeah. there are some, they get education, they don't care. Yeah. But there are those, when they receive this education, you can see the change they are doing in their yeah. homes. In their homes. And so what, what other factors do you think, you know, militate against the girl-child edu education, other than those elements you have brought out of culture? those, you know, traditional cultural experiences. What are the other things that you feel slows down, you know, the progress that you... you of you, a girl you, child. You know, the girl child in particular. In um, those, those areas of marginalized communities. Mostly it is the poverty. Because if, like today, the, the, the parents, the, the ch children are asked to bring something, then the parents don't have. Yeah. So, that this girl will always feel bad. Always when we are told to bring this, we don't have. Mm -hmm. So this child will uh, we withdraw. Okay. So, the, so the poverty. Poverty. So, so, yes. so one is culture, two is poverty. Which one else? Because I'm writing them down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another one which makes these uh, girls not mm -hmm. to, which he does the education, is early marriage. Mm -hmm. The, the, either the parents make them get married mm. or themselves. Mostly they run away from home and they find themselves married. Mm -hmm. So the, the, this prevents from developing this girl whom you find maybe in a, in a situation or in a village. They, they, they have very high hopes 
for this girl to to receive the education mm -hmm. but because of this hindrance mm -hmm. there is no education okay yes but then what, what what kind of courses do you offer in your institution are they you know technical courses or what's your structure like as i said earlier yeah we, we started with the nursery school yeah then we jumped to secondary school yeah then we started uh, primary school yeah. and now we have yeah. uh, a technical school yeah. which is called marengoni yeah. vocational training college mm. whereby they are doing a different type of courses mm. and uh, we what kind of courses i'm interested to know especially the technical ones engineering uh -huh. we have uh, kukale uh -huh. Then uh, in the same college, during holidays, we have uh, ECD, ECD. Yeah, early childhood. Yes. Yeah. Then we have something uh, to do with the um, saloon. Mm -hmm. So we, we have different kind of... Okay. You know, you know, I was asking you that, huh? because I was expecting to hear something around technology. Yes. Because if you look at the trajectory of the world, mm. everything is going smart. Yes. Okay? Mm. So, yes, I've had saloon, I've had uh, cookery, but I'm not hearing the space for technology. We have a computer, mm -hmm. we have electro electricity, mm -hmm. so all these kind of courses are done there. Okay. Yes. All right. So and uh, these these uh, these institutions yeah. are owned by Evangelizing Sisters of Mary. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are the one who started. Yeah. And they own them. Yeah. But we follow each and every thing mm -hmm. which the ministry. Okay. Demands. Thank you. So as we wind up, mm. um, what do you see uh, as the possible verdict? once that task force has been put in place around CBC. What are you seeing? Because we are coming from the 844, and the previous one was what? You go to Form 4, then you go to Form 6, and then you go to the university, university yes. but you've had, had seven years in primary. So yes. when you look at that landscape, mm. you know, uh, wh what do you think would be the verdict of... For me, as being a, a as secondary school teacher, teacher yeah. and looking at these children who are doing the exam in grade six, mm -hmm. these children are too young. Mm -hmm. So my expectation and what I'm hoping mm -hmm. is this grade, the, the junior secondary, mm -hmm. not to, to, to go to secondary school, and the, to transit to a secondary building. Let me use that word. Mm -hmm. mm, but to, to remain in the, that, that uh, Instead of coming from grade six, they, as they were choosing secondary school, mm -hmm. I was imagining this child who is supposed to be in class seven mm -hmm. going to secondary school. Uh, other teachers, you know, secondary school teachers have not yet been trained much, although mm -hmm. I, I wish to thank the Diocese of Catholic Diocese of Go, mm -hmm. is helping us to train our teachers, secondary school teachers. Mm -hmm. But these children are too young. Let me ask you, school. when you say the secondary school teachers have not been trained enough, mm. what is the implication on that on the learners? You know, this CBC has so many activities whereby the secondary school teachers are not yet uh, uh, acquainted with how they are supposed to handle these young children and perhaps the subject they are to learn. But uh, I, I thank the ministry because they started the training the teachers. Mm -hmm. Plus, me, I have mentioned our Catholic Diocese of Gong. Mm -hmm. They are helping us to train them. Mm -hmm. But I still say this grade six, grade seven, and grade eight, mm -hmm. which is the junior secondary, yeah. these children are too young to yeah. come to, to now. You know, they will come and join the 844, those who are still there. They, will, they may not be comfortable, mm -hmm. and we we may not manage to handle them. You know, we are used to handling these girls and boys who have already made their choice that I'm going to secondary school mm -hmm. and have completed class eight. Mm -hmm. Now these are class seven children. Okay. Only that we are calling them <laughs> junior secondary. So the executive summary of what you're saying is that there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the CBC. A lot. I want to thank you.
for Ayo. finding time to come and discuss to us with us, Sister Teresia Mbogwa. Thank you very much indeed.